horrifying event. Welcome back to the channel. This is episode 86 of Brett on Fett. And last week on Tuesday, January 23rd, Hasbro had their first Star Wars fan stream of the year where they reveal some of their latest products as well as pipeline some future products to come. And these fan streams typically come with their fair share of criticism from the collectors, either upset with what they revealed or upset with what they did not reveal or questioning too many repaints or repacks. It's very typical to hear those sort of things and it just seemed like with this fan stream there was more flack than usual. I saw a lot of people upset online about this one. I even saw comments from people saying after this fan stream now they're done with Hasbro. And I'm here to tell you I think a lot of you are overreacting about this fan stream. I actually don't think it was that bad. A lot of this stuff we already knew was coming and been pipelined before and so they were simply revealing stuff we already knew about. Some of them are simply Hasbro trying to correct previous mistakes and showing that they actually are listening to the fans. And while a lot of the reveals were not sexy, there were some reveals here that were really awesome. Now I'm not saying that everything on this fan stream was good, there definitely were some disappointments which I'll get to but I wanted to go over my reaction to all the reveals from this fan stream and hopefully to convince you to back off the ledge a little bit and it's not all bad. There are some very positive things happening over at Hasbro to come in all the Star Wars lines. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so we'll go ahead and get Retro Collection out of the way first because there was only one announcement. First off, they reminded us about a previous reveal or the Phantom Menace, which is a nice six pack. I do like these six pack boxes that they have done with the Retro Collection. But then they announced that they're going to continue that with the prequels on episodes two and three, but it's going to be a combination of two and three in one six pack with two characters from episode two and four characters from episode three. I just don't understand why they decided to do it this way. Why not give them a six pack for each of the three films? And if you are gonna do a six pack for both films, why not at least divide it up evenly with three figures from two and three figures from episode three? I mean, you got Mace Windu there. He easily could have been an Attack of the Clones Mace Windu, but for some reason they're making him a Revenge of the Sith Mace Windu to make it lopsided. Go figure. By the way, I am fascinated at the thought of what Hasbro might do with the Grievous, how they're going to interpret a Kenner style figure for that character. I just cannot picture it in my mind at all. I think it could be creative and interesting looking, or it could go horribly wrong and just look like a hot mess. So maybe I'm off to a bad start trying to convince you that this fan stream was not that bad, but hang in there, it does get better. All right, next up is the Black Series, and I actually think the Black Series had a very solid showing at this fan stream, starting with a all new Phase 1 Clone Trooper on that new clone body, and this is a safe choice. It's an army builder. It's a clean army builder. And I think this will sell very well for the Black Series. I really see nothing wrong with this figure. I think he looks pretty excellent, actually. Next up, they revealed the new Droidica Destroyer Droid. It's going to be a pretty large figure, and so they're going to put it in an enlarged galaxy-style box. And they're putting it under the Phantom Menace-style packaging, which is good to see because the Black Series is severely lacking Phantom Menace figures. So I thought that was a good choice. Uh, but the droid itself looks excellent. I really like the paint job on the outer parts. It's got some nice detailing there. And the best thing about this is probably the articulation. They described a lot of articulation for this kind of figure, including the fact that it can actually roll up into the ball mode for the droid. That was pretty impressive. So overall, I think this is a really nice looking droid figure. Now it's probably worth noting that this one is not going to come with any blast effects and it's not gonna come with the big shield effect, but I didn't think it would in the first place. I think that probably would not have worked out too well. And I think it just would have been too difficult to make it look right for a six inch scale figure. So I'm not surprised it's not coming with that. I still think this is going to be a really good figure for the Black Series. And for the final product reveal for the Black Series, they have this Grand Admiral Thrawn from his live action appearance from Ahsoka. Now this does look pretty good. However, this is a computer rendering of the figure. And I'm not a fan of when Hasbro does this. To me, if they're going to reveal a product 
wait until you actually have the product to reveal and not go with a computer generated version of it because the final product could turn out to be a little different. So I'm not exactly sure how excited to be for this figure, but I am excited they're making the live action version of Thrawn. If they're doing it for the Black Series, that means they're also going to do it for TVC. So very excited for that. Love Thrawn. All right, and finally for the Black Series, we had some pipeline reveals. My favorite of these reveals is the IG-12 with Grogu and Art Zelen. I think if done right, this could be a very fun figure, a very cool figure. Now they do have to give us an all new mold for the IG-11 style body. As you guys probably know, the IG-11 in the Black Series was just a reuse from IG-88, which was not accurate. So if they do an all new mold that's accurate and they make it work where you can take Grogu out and put Art Zelen in and vice versa, if they make that work and it doesn't look too bulky, this could be an awesome figure. So we'll keep a close eye on this one. This is another one that could turn out really awesome or really bad. Next, they revealed a Mandalorian Night Owl figure, which I'm going to assume is a repaint of the Bo-Katan slash Cosco Reeves figure. This is kind of a ho-hum reveal, probably my least favorite but not horrible. I mean, Mandos are pretty cool. I know a lot of people are getting Mandoed out, but there's not that much variety of female Mandos available. And so I think this repaint makes sense. It's just not something I'm particularly interested in. Then they showed a future Jedi Survivor three pack set of droids. I think this could look pretty cool. These are gonna be some really neat looking repaints. You know with that super battle droid mold being all new that they're gonna get as much use out of it as possible. So this doesn't surprise me at all. And then you've got that Magna Guard droid that also looks pretty cool. And so I think those two especially are going to be worth this pack. Now the B1, we've seen something so similar before with other releases. So that's almost like a repack to me. It's so close probably. But the other two I think will make it worthwhile for droid fans and Jedi Survivor fans alike. Then they revealed that the Super Battle Droid will be available in a single release by himself. I did not like that debut release they announced where he comes with the B1 battle droid with the C3PO head. I thought that was terrible. I don't think anybody was really asking for that. And so it makes a lot of sense. Thank goodness they're going to make him available by himself because it would have been impossible to army build. That two pack was not something I was ever going to be interested in buying, but I probably will pick up this super battle droid by himself, even though. I'm not collecting Black Series that much anymore because he is a pretty awesome looking droid. I think they did a great job with that figure. And by the way, this Super Battle Droid is a perfect example of some of these reveals on the fan streams that are perceived as disappointing to people because they're not exciting because this is not something new, obviously. But I still like when they announce stuff like this so that we know they're going to get something right. We don't have to continue on worrying about whether or not we can get the super battle droid by himself so people can army build him if that's what they want to do. So they're just letting us know, hey, don't worry if you're not interested in that two pack that was pretty ridiculous. Here comes a single release. It's just nice to get that confirmation on stuff like this. And the final pipeline reveal for the Black Series was actually a helmet and it is Moth Gideon's helmet from his Mandalore armor that he put on towards the end of Mandalorian Season 3. Pretty cool looking uniform, really awesome looking helmet. So I'm curious to see how well it turns out as the final product. And now let's get into the reveals from the line that's more of my bread and butter, that being the Vintage Collection. And I want to preface this by again saying that all of these product reveals were for figures we already knew were coming. They were either pipelined or made through some other announcement. So there's no shockers here and just something to keep in mind. So let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a straight reissue that was revealed, that being the Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot figure. And I like that they're doing this. They're putting out some of these mainline figures for newer collectors who didn't get a chance to have them. These are main characters. It doesn't get more main than Luke Skywalker himself. There's a lot of X-Wing toys out there. People need pilots for them. So I think this is a solid choice for a reissue. And it's really worth noting that they fixed the issue with the warning label covering up the Hildebrandt logo in the top right corner. That was something many fans complained about. I know John Miko from the Vintage Collection Facebook group was very vocal about this. And so this is awesome to me. It shows that Hasbro is listening to the fans and willing to make some adjustments. Yeah, it's a minor thing and it probably should have never happened in the first place, but at least it shows that they're making some effort 
to correct some of these issues. And so I think this is a very positive reveal, not only from the standpoint of it's a good decision to reissue some of these main characters, but also to show that they're going to fix certain things such as that warning label issue. Now the next reveal I'm going to talk about is both a major positive and possibly a major negative at the same time and that is Axe Wolves. Now the positive about this is that they've made it very clear that the helmet on this figure is fixed. They have admitted and recognized the issue with the removable helmet on the original release being far too big and they wanted to fix that and so this figure's main purpose is to fix that helmet issue. It will be interchangeable. It will be the right size. Now the negative is it's very confusing about the images they released because it seems like the same figure with the same removable helmet that looks a little too big. So I'm not sure if they just haven't gotten the right photos yet. And the other issue is they put it on this card back from Mandalorian season three, which by the way, looks really awesome. Another positive, very awesome looking card back. However, again, the figure they're showing looks to be the same exact figure we've already gotten rather than having it repainted and maybe a little bit of retooling for his season three look. And Hasbro did say in previous fan streams when they pipeline this figure that he would get his season three look. So I don't know if that was a mistake or if the images here are a mistake. So a little concerning there, this may be the most controversial reveal from the fan stream where you've got clearly a season two X Wobes figure on a season three X Wobes card back. It almost looks like a miss card. So hopefully this gets worked out and it's really just the images are wrong, but I have a bad feeling they're not wrong. And this is simply going to be a repack with an interchangeable helmet to correct the helmet issue. So I don't quite know how to feel about this yet till I get confirmation on whether or not the images are correct. I have a feeling more than likely this will be a repack and they've just decided to put it on a different card and go with the season three Mando card. I don't think that's a good decision, but keep in mind there's still a positive here regardless because it still shows that Hasbro is listening to us and trying to make it right. We all wanted that helmet to be fixed. We shouted about it. And here they are, they're giving us a fix. Now the execution may not be perfect if they're gonna use the wrong card back for it, but we'll see what happens if we're lucky. Maybe they will make some adjustments to the figure itself to match the season three look. And if they don't do that and they just reissue the same figure with the corrected helmet and you don't think it's worth buying it to get that corrected helmet, then just don't buy it. Next up, they revealed the Mandalorian Fleet Commander. Now this was a figure that was revealed a while ago for the Black Series and I remember being jealous that the Black Series had it and we didn't. It was another one of those new media characters that the Black Series was getting ahead of TVC and I liked him. I thought he's a pretty cool looking Mando figure. Now I know a lot of you guys are just Mandoed out. You don't want to see any more Mandalorian figures, but I'm sorry, I'm not. I think the Mandalorians are some of the coolest looking action figures and I'll take them all. They're easy to do for Hasbro, so just make it happen. If it's something easy to do, it doesn't take a whole lot of the budget, then I don't understand the complaints about them putting these repaints out because the Mandalorian figures sell well. I don't recall ever seeing any Mandalorian type figures just peg warming constantly. Those are not the figures that peg warm. They are selling. And so, you know, Hasbro can easily make those and get a decent profit off of those repaints and put that towards the budget for all newly tooled figures that we still need. So I have no problem with this. And by the way, if you're one of those TVC collectors that complained when the Black Series revealed that they were getting this figure and you said to yourself, oh, there goes the Black Series again, getting yet another new media figure that we're not getting then you ought to be happy about this reveal. You can't complain about the Black Series getting them and then complain that this is a lame reveal for TVC. You just can't have it both ways. But overall, I think this is a very good release. We always want all the characters. And so why not get the low hanging fruit, the easy ones that can be done using molding we already have with a simple repaint. I'm all for this. And speaking of Mandos, here we go again. Another Mandalorian figure. Now, I totally understand if your initial reaction to this is, oh my God, another Mandalorian figure. How many of these are we going to have? I get that. But I got to tell you, I am very happy about this reveal 
because of the whole situation with the N1 Starfighter. I am a carded collector first and foremost. So when I bought that N1 Starfighter, I did not take that Mando off the card. And I had to use the old original Beskar Mando that's not very good. The one with the soft plastic cape that I basically had to remove in order to fit him inside the N1. I had to use that because I didn't want to go buy the rescue set. thought that was overpriced to get the soft goods figure and I didn't like the gauntlet on that one. This is the most definitive Mando we have. And so I wanted a separate release where he's not firewalled behind the price of the N1 Starfighter. So I think this was an excellent move on Hasbro's part. I'm very happy about this. I actually pre-ordered two of these because I like the card back as well. So I'm going to go ahead and keep one on card back. But I definitely wanted one loose to have to use with my N1 Starfighter or any other loose displays I want to use because this is a very good looking Mando. And let's face it, he's one of the most popular characters in Star Wars right now. So we need this figure to be accessible to the average collector. No one should have to get into the hobby and feel like they have to go buy the old original Beskar Mando when this one exists. And no one should feel like they have to buy the N1 Starfighter just to get this Mando either. So I think this is a great move. I think this is a positive reveal versus a lot of you that saw this as a disappointing reveal. And so I'm a little concerned at if enough fans complain about stuff like this, that it's going to give Hasbro the wrong message and they'll think that it's okay to firewall figures behind play sets and vehicles and not put out additional releases that are more accessible. Now this next one I have to admit was disappointing to me even though I knew it was coming. It was pipelined and that is the season 3 Grogu. I just don't think there's enough difference in the Grogu's from season to season that warrants needing this many. We've got so many Grogu's. Yes his pram looks a little different in season 3 and so they've captured that here. I just don't think it's enough to really warrant this figure. If you're a super Grogu fan, maybe you're excited about this, but I just can't get excited about another Grogu figure. It's not the same as with the Mandos for me, where I'm happy to take every repaint. This is just the same Grogu figure with just slightly different expressions each time, and then a different painted pram, and so it's just not something that interests me at all. I'll probably get it just to have it on card because I pretty much am a completionist when it comes to TBC, at least for mint on card. So I will get it, but I've got to say I'm just not excited about this release. All right, so now we're getting to the really awesome product reveals for TBC, starting with the Clone Commander Rex Bracca mission. This is from the Bad Batch, but it is an all new Rex using the new clone trooper body molds. And this guy looks awesome. I mean, he looks like a definitive Rex to me that we've been needing for a long time. His helmet looks great. I love the soft goods comma there. Everything about this Rex looks really good to me. The one minor thing I might have done differently if I was Hasbro is added a little bit of weathering. And I mean just a little bit of subtle weathering. I wouldn't have wanted to be just a completely dirtied up Rex. But other than that, I think he looks great. We've needed a new Rex so bad. That original Clone Wars Rex we got in TVC is an atrocity. And so it's been a long time coming to get a definitive Rex. I think it's safe to say this is a definitive Rex, at least for now. And so I think this is a big deal. Rex is a major character. He's got a huge fan base. So there's got to be a lot of you TVC collectors out there that are excited for this release. This is a big time highlight for this fan stream. And finally, for the product reveals for TVC, my favorite product reveal, the two pack of Sabine Wren and Chopper from Rebels with the mural card backs. I am so excited about this release. Of course, I did back the Ghost HasLab. And with that, of course, it came with the first four members of the crew that was missing Sabine and Chopper. And that's when Hasbro said that if we did fully back the Ghost, they would produce these and make them available to everyone. And I was really hoping they would do it like this with a two pack in the two pack box to help protect the figures. And they did. So I was very happy with that. And what I was even more happy about was how well Sabine turned out. She looks fantastic. I love the paint apps. Her helmet is interchangeable. And so there's no size issue there. Her hair looks great. Everything about this figure looks fantastic. 
It's got a lot of deco on here, and despite being carded, this will be considered a deluxe figure, and I know that because they made that pretty clear on the fan stream. Sabine is an amazing deluxe figure, and Sabine's deluxe details, her deluxe factor really comes from her upgraded deco. Deluxe, 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 deluxe. These are both pretty deluxo versions of figures. Deluxo, 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 deluxo. All right, so although most of us shudder at the word deluxe in the TVC line, because we know it means more money. The positive from this is that Hasbro is showing that they're willing to switch things off when something is labeled as a deluxe figure. It doesn't mean it's got to go in that deluxe windowless box that they've been doing. And I'm very anti those boxes. I love stuff to be on a card back. I always want it on a card back if it's possible. And with the Sabine figure, with all the accessories, it shows that what we already do and that the deluxe figures can still go on card backs you know as long as they don't come with an excessively large accessory such as an e-web cannon but anyways the chopper looks very good as well he's pretty much the same chopper as from the ahsoka series just with some slightly different paint apps and for some reason they decide to throw in a couple of loath cats with chopper i guess to make up for that deluxe price point making both figures deluxe so it's all one two pack deluxe package so you know it is what it is it's fine not a big deal to me i'm just so happy about sabine it really is all about sabine and completing those mural card backs for all six of the ghost crew now don't forget this is a hasbro pulse exclusive and pre-orders are now underway everyone is guaranteed to get your hands on this and you can order up to three i believe and these are made to order so they're going to make as many as are pre-ordered but you got to get your pre-orders in in that window by no later than february 14th now keep in mind this two-pack is expensive they consider them deluxe figures so they've jacked up the price and those two packs are always a little bit more expensive per figure than usual mainline releases anyway so this thing is a whopping 49.95 us so just keep that in mind all right, so now it's time to go over the Vintage Collection Pipeline reveals. This is another part of the fan stream that I heard a lot of criticism about, but I'm here to tell you there's a lot more positives here as well than there are of negatives. So let's go through them one by one. I'll try to speed things up because I know this video is getting long. First off, they revealed an Amazon exclusive four pack of figures with Ahsoka, R7A7, CH33P, and RGG1. So you got Ahsoka and basically three brand new astromech droids. I'm very excited about this. I love droids. I've been complaining that there haven't been quite enough droids, including astromechs in the vintage collection in the la last few years. And so I'm very excited about this. I'm pretty sure being an Amazon exclusive, this is not going to be like a builder pack. These are going to be four individually carded figures. I'm not so sure about what the Ahsoka is going to look like because this should be from the Clone Wars season seven. So she should look identical to the season seven one we got where she's going against Darth Maul. So it may just be a straight repack. I don't know if it's going to be on the same card, or maybe a different card. Really no idea. But to me, this is all about the astromech droids. And I'm really hoping this is, means we're going to get an all new mold for the astromechs. Maybe it means that R2-D2 that was Pipeline is going to get a new mold. And so we'll, we'll be just reusing that mold for a lot more astromechs, which I would be super excited about. So very, very happy we're getting these astromech packs. So very excited about this reveal. Next up, the HK-87. This is going to be the more tan and red HK-87. If you caught my review of the first HK-87, he was like the all red and I was kind of complaining that I would rather have had the tan one. And I also said I'm sure it was going to be coming anyways. And here it is. So this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted this version of the HK-87. I expected it. So therefore, I'm happy that it's part of the pipeline reveals. Next, the Dark Trooper. Very happy about this. Other people were saying, oh, another Dark Trooper. We've already gotten the Dark Trooper. This isn't a reveal. Well, it is because they've announced they're putting it on a card back. And maybe that's not exciting to a lot of you, but to me, it's very exciting because I was complaining since day one that we weren't getting a Dark Trooper on a card back. I think it will be an awesome card back. And so I'm glad they're doing this. It makes sense. They had a brand new mold. They're going to want to get their money's worth for that mold. And this is how they're going to do it. 
is put it on a card back. I'm happy to buy this for a card back. No, I'm not going to army build off these. I've already got a couple of the deluxe figures, although that would make sense if those of you who have not army built this figure yet but wanted to, this is a cheaper option. I guess, you know, unless you found it on discount, of course, that deluxe version, but it's still a very good move to put this on a card back for your mint on card collectors and for new collectors that maybe didn't buy the deluxe versions. And so I'm very happy about this. I can't wait to see what the card back is going to look like. I think it's going to be awesome, but this is a win. I love this reveal. And then next is Ahsoka the White, another one that I very much expected for the Ahsoka series to come out. And I think it's going to be an awesome figure. The original Ahsoka figure we got from the live action, uh, you know, Mandalorian show uh, was was good. It's a good figure, but this is a very cool look for her. I'm very excited to see what they do with this. It's probably going to be a lot of reuse, but it shouldn't be a straight repaint. So I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with that. So that's another win. I think that's going to be a great figure. Also a figure I expected to see. Now the next one, maybe my most disappointing of all the reveals from the fan stream. This is pretty bad. And it's another Mando, but not the definitive one we got from the N1. We already saw that earlier in the fan stream. The only difference in this one is it's coming with the Super Commando jetpack from the part of the show where he steals one of the Super Commando's jetpacks and puts it on. I don't know why they're doing this. This does scream money grubbing. This seems a little bit desperate. And I just don't think they should have done this. And if they're going to do it, they should not have put it as a pipeline reveal on the same fan stream where they've already announced another Mandalorian. And so this was a bad move, Hasbro. You should not have shown this. You really should even do this. But I'll try to take a positive out of this. There is one positive, And that is if they're making the mold for that Super Commando jetpack, then maybe that is a tease that they are actually making the entire figure of that Super Commando. And that is on my top 25 most wanted figures. So I'm very excited about the prospect of that coming to fruition. But really, this is just a bad idea and a bad look for Hasbro, frankly, to do this. Really, they should just put out the Super Commando jetpack and have it interchangeable so you could take his backpack off and put it on the Mando. And so you just don't need to release a whole new Mando just to change out a backpack. So it's pretty ridiculous. And definitely for me, this is the low light of the entire fan stream. Now, next is not an exciting reveal, but it's not a terrible one either. And that is the season three version of Bo-Katan. So it's going to be a repaint with maybe a little bit of retooling for like her chest plate and that sort of thing. I think there's some subtle differences for her season three look, but this was expected that we would get a season three Bo-Katan and it was an excellent figure. The season two Bo-Katan is an awesome figure. One of the best figures from a couple years ago. And so naturally they're going to try to get some more use out of it. So it just doesn't surprise me. It's not exciting, but it's not bad either. So now you'll have something that is accurate for that season three look. And finally, I've saved the best for last. The most exciting reveal of the entire fan stream. We are finally, finally getting Cobb Vanth in the vintage collection. This is great news. This is exciting news. This announcement alone makes this a great fan stream, in my opinion. The other positives on the fan stream are bonus to this. This is as big a news, if not bigger, than revealing that we're finally getting a Count Dooku. And with this Boba Fett armored version of Cobb Vanth, I'm positive we will also get the unarmored version of the Marshal himself from the Book of Boba Fett as well. And so very excited to get him in the line. It's going to be great. It's going to be great, guys. We so, promise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. All right. So that's going to do it for this episode of Brett on Fett. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this latest fan stream and whether or not I've convinced you that maybe it's not all that bad. Or do you think I'm a shill for taking anything positive out of this one? Thanks for checking out this video. Thank you so much to my subscribers. Don't forget, you can also follow me on Instagram and on X. Take care and we'll see you next time.